Okay, today we're going to be doing the experiment 9, rotational motion and moment of inertia. This is the apparatus that we're going to use. We're going to hang a weight from the string here, and as this falls, it's going to pull on the string and make this thing rotate. Okay, but before I do that, let's go over a few things. So make sure you read the experiment document. It's posted on Blackboard for you. We have, <coughs> for particles, the moment of inertia i is equal to the sum of m sub i r sub i squared. m is the mass of the individual, of each individual particle, and r is its distance from the rotation axis. Okay? And now to find this, what we're going to do with this apparatus, the falling weight is going to make this spin. So we'll apply conservation of energy. The initial energy will equal the final energy. Our initial energy, everything will be at rest. This thing will be hanging above the ground. And so we have some gravitational potential energy. When it reaches the floor, this thing will be moving as it hits the floor. And this will be spinning as it hits the floor. So our initial energy is just the gravitational potential energy of this falling mass mgy, where y is the distance it falls, and then when this reaches the bottom, we have this thing moving, so it has some kinetic energy, one-half little mv squared, and then we have this thing spinning, so it's one-half i omega squared. Okay, We want to solve for i, so I multiply through by 2 to get rid of the one-half, so I have 2 mgy equals mv squared plus i omega squared, and then solving for i, I get little m times the quantity of 2gy minus v squared over omega squared will equal i. In omega, of course, the angular velocity of the spinning object is related to the velocity of the falling object by v over little r. Little r is the radius of the shaft. The velocity of the falling weight is the same as the velocity of the string coming off the edge of the central shaft. And so the tangential velocity of the central shaft is <coughs> v. So v over the radius of the central shaft will give us the angular velocity of the rotating apparatus. And so that's how we find omega. Okay. And then when you do your calculations, we're using CD units, so don't forget to use 980 centimeters per second squared for g. Okay, I'm going to pause shortly and back the camera up so you get a better view. Okay, here on this slate, I have I is the moment of inertia of the whole system with the weights on here. We want to measure just the rotational inertia of just the weights alone, but we can't do that. We have to have them attached to the whole apparatus. So I is the moment of inertia for the whole apparatus. I sub zero is the rotational inertia of the apparatus with no weights on it. And I one is the moment of inertia for the weights alone. So if this is the one we want. So I solve for I one and I get I minus I naught. So I naught is the moment of inertia of the system without the big masses, and I one is of the masses alone. Okay, and so that's the one we want to measure. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put the weights on here like they are now. We're going to measure the moment of inertia, then take the weights off, measure the moment of inertia with no weights, and that will be the I naught. So then I can subtract i naught from i, and that will give me the moment of inertia for just the weights alone. And I'm going to do that in two ways. We're going to vary r, keeping the mass constant, and then we're going to vary the total masses and keep and <coughs> keep the radius constant. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, get the apparatus set up. So we'll pause momentarily. Okay, now I'm ready to start collecting data. Uh, I 
measured the radius of the shaft with the calipers, and I got a diameter of 1.270 centimeters, and so the radius will be half of that, so we'll calculate that and put that in here. I also need to know how far the falling weight falls, so I'm going to try to do it from the same point every time. So I'm going to put this, and so the weight just touches the bottom of the table. And then I can measure this. I've already measured it once, but I do it again, and I can see that it's still consistent. I'm right at 71.50 centimeters. So that's how far it will fall to the floor. So knowing how far it falls to the floor, and timing it with the stopwatch, I can get the instantaneous velocity when it hits the floor. So, in that, of course, since I have a constant velocity, the instantaneous velocity when it hits the floor is twice the average velocity, and the average velocity, of course, is just the distance over the time. Right? And that derivation is also in the experiment handout, and we've done that before on some of our other labs earlier this semester. So now all I have, all I have to do is measure the time this takes to fall to the floor. So I get my stopwatch ready, and I release. Nine point seven seven seconds. Okay, then I'm going to do it again. Wind this up. Reset my stopwatch. Ten point one nine seconds. Measure it once more. Nine point eight. Okay, next I'm going to take these weights off and leave the wing nuts in place. And now I measure it again without the weights. Okay, and that data goes into the second column. So the first column. I have with the weights on, and in the second column, I'm going to do the apparatus with no weights on.
Okay, so next we're going to put more weights on here, and I'm going to increase this weights. And so I'm going to pause right here while I set up the equipment. Okay, now I have 50 grams on each end at 12 centimeters. And so we're going to do 50 grams at 12 centimeters. We already have 100 grams at 12 centimeters. Then we're going to do 200 grams at 12 centimeters and 300 grams at 12 centimeters. So we're varying the total mass, but we're keeping the radius constant. Okay, so now I'm going to wind it up. Seven point five zero seconds. Eight point zero one. Okay, there's my three runs with this. The next I'm going to do, I'm going to put two hundred grams on each end. Okay, now I have 300 and 300, each one at 12 centimeters radius. Okay, so I'll wind this one up. Fifteen point seven zero. Fifteen point six three. Okay, next I'm going to go back to one hundred grams, but I'm going to vary the radius. So we'll set that one up. Okay, and now I've got hundred grams at eight centimeters from the center. So eight centimeter radius. I'm going to do three runs with this one.
Seven plus two is six. Okay, so that's three months with that one. Then I'm going to move them out to ten centimeters. Okay, now I have 100 grams at 10 centimeters. So I'll do the three runs with this. Eight point six nine. Okay, then finally, I've already got one for twelve centimeters that we did very in the beginning. So then I'll do one at fourteen centimeters, and then have all the data collected. And then after that, I will show you. After I've done the calculations on mine, I will show you how to make the graphs. Okay, but you'll have to do the calculations yourself or your own reports. I'll give you a copy of mine with just the measurements, and then you can do the calculations. But after I, I'm going to go ahead and do the calculations and then show you how to make the graphs. So I won't go through the video of doing this at 14 centimeters. I'll just go ahead and collect that because you can already see how the data is collected.